Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Welcome to The Mike O'Mara Show on a Tuesday, a very, very strange morning for all of us. Uh, You know, those of us that have worked in the D.C. area, the Mm. D.C. Baltimore area, and, uh, you know, some people closer than others. Um, it's amazing to me, as we tape this, we have found out earlier this morning, about 1.30 this morning, a, uh, a giant ocean liner, tanker, uh, car carrier, cargo ship, uh, you know, has those big giant uh, yeah, container cars ship. on top. A container yeah. ship, thank you. I was looking for that and I couldn't find it. Uh, hit the... Uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge, a massive, massive bridge in Baltimore. And how they had the video, they did. And hit a, a, a support structure in the middle of the bridge, and the whole effing thing collapsed. I've never seen anything quite. Unfortunately, the perspective of the shot they show when you see it go in does nothing to show you the scale of that tragedy. Yeah. And um, it is a bridge that all of us have traveled, some of us more than others, and it is uh, going to change the uh, transportation landscape mm. in Baltimore for months, years. if not oh, years. I'd say years, yeah. Um, and it took we five don't... years to construct the bridge. It's what? It took, it took five years initially to construct the bridge. That's way back when, right? I mean, that's that was, in the 70s. That's in the 70s. So, yeah. and it looked like it was a bridge that was built in the 70s. Yeah. And the thing is, there are a lot more bridges that have built been built earlier than that. So, it's strange the way we get information. It's really, really strange the way mm-hmm. we become aware of something. I am on, was it Facebook? And I don't go on Facebook in the morning anymore. I happen to... I know what I was doing. I was doing a weight loss post for Carla's mm. company because I had a, a low weight this morning. And as I'm on there, I flip back over to see if it posted okay. And I see this highly cryptic, the key bridge is gone. And I immediately said, key bridge in Washington? That's what a lot of people thought, I think. Yeah. And then I immediately Google what's happening with, uh, with key bridge. And then it all comes through, and then just amazing. And I hate to say this, especially in, uh, out of respect to the families that have lost people in this tragedy. Thank God it was one thirty in the morning. If yeah. that had been two hours later, two hours later, because they have the same commute that uh, DC has, two hours later, three thirty in the morning, it would have been a significant loss of life. An hour later, even worse. Uh, and so to see this main uh, artery now to give you a little picture of Baltimore and we've all uh, Oscars worked in Baltimore. Yeah, I have uh, worked briefly in Baltimore, uh, you know, subbing for people. I've never been on the radio up there other mm-hmm. than syndicated. The Francis Ski, uh, Scott Key Bridge, it links a Baltimore Beltway, which is called 695. And that's the inner beltway. Circumference inside, road, yeah. Inside of uh, Route 95 uh, going to downtown Baltimore. So anyone that's going to go and check out anything in downtown Baltimore that's coming from the south is going to pop in. Yes, Rob Spiewak. I was going to say, I've got a, a few stats on the bridge. It was yeah, opened in 1977, as Oscar said. Um, it is 1.6 miles long, a four-lane bridge, a key link to the Baltimore Beltway that completes that circumference road. Uh, the, post, the port's private and public terminals handled 847,152 autos and light trucks in 23. Speaking the of most, the mic, buddy, I can't hear you. The most of any U.S. port, and it also handles farm and construction machinery. So this is not only going to cripple the the automotive commission, but also access to the port of Baltimore, yeah, which is still a, a functioning I just port. I even, yeah, I didn't even process that. That is so yeah. true. Yeah, that's just 
a mile and a half of of debris. Yeah, you won't be able to sail through that, and it covers the Patapsco River. Is the uh, so water many covers questions? Uh, when you were working in Baltimore, mm-hmm. were you living in Olney, Oscar? When you yeah. were, uh, I would so- no, I was at, no, I was in Glover Park and would drive to Baltimore. You would drive to Baltimore. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Would yeah. you uh, would would you hop on that bridge on a regular basis? No, or you would, you missed it. You'd go downtown, right? Uh, yeah, so we would go. You, I would take that bridge. I, for four to five years, when I worked at WHFS as an intern and then subsequently as on air talent, we had a ton of promotions where we would have to take that bridge into. Like what would be North Baltimore? Yeah, and uh, and I just knew this. These were the days where you're like you got to take the Key Bridge, or you're going downtown. The Key Bridge would just get you to the top of wherever the next promotion was going to be in that area. And we'd come back and go, and we would go, you know, middle of the night sometimes when the promotions were over, coming back to the radio station and drop off the vehicle. Um, and what struck me was that not just the fact that the loss of life and the missing people is that in 2024, um, a bridge of that size is so susceptible to that type of impact. Incredible. Um, The only eyewitness I saw, uh, and he was not an eyewitness, he was a sound witness, because he said- He just heard it? He has a house close by, said he felt the vibration, and then he said it sounded like an earthquake, uh, and it sounded like an explosion. So- um, what you got to think about when that impact happens is the extraordinary weight tons, of a container ship. Tons, I think, something like that. Even if it's not moving at a great speed, it has got so much potential energy because of the weight that is moving, the bridge will never stand a chance against that. Mm. Now, see, when you say that, I, I wonder, uh, you know, this can't be the first time a large ship even a cargo ship, a carrier, a cargo carrier has hit a bridge. I think there's got to be some engineering that, I mean, I get the idea that it would do a significant amount of yeah. damage, but the idea of hitting one pylon, and I calling it a pylon is not the accurate description. Structure or footing, I guess. I don't, of... I don't know my bridge terminology. Mm-hmm. But the to bridge hit, feet. To, to, to hit one of them and then have it take out, the entire span, this like is a the, set of dominoes, it doesn't make a lot they, of sense. They said, I heard on a news conference this morning with the Baltimore officials, they said that this has never happened in Baltimore before, so I'm sure it has happened, but not in Baltimore. But also, it had to do with the, the design of the bridge. It is the kind of bridge that is reliant on all pieces being together. And when that when they took out that one piece, that's what caused the massive damage. I hate the phrase perfect storm, but it was almost like a perfect hit to destroy that bridge. And I think that's one of the reasons why they even had FBI there this morning. Because they thought there was a terrorism. Chance. Yeah, They're now they said not. They said before not. Before I came to uh, tape this show, the latest I heard from the overly exuberant national reporter, which makes me want to barf when they get excited and they're screaming and you don't need to scream but he indicated that eyewitnesses said the ship could possibly have had mechanical issues that the lights went out and came back on and went out again on the ship prior to the uh, collision so that's the details of what happened up in baltimore the reality and the horror of this situation is that they have no idea how many people. There's a construction crew up on the bridge. Yes. Uh, they don't know exactly how many cars were on the bridge. That uh, is, in my opinion, a sweet spot as far mm-hmm. as a time of mourning. You know, yeah. you got probably, uh, although you do have the, you know, the the people that are out doing whatever are coming and it home is, if they're closing It is bars. the artery for 95 north and south. If you don't take the harbor tunnel, yeah. you're going to be on that you're going to be on that bridge. And one other thing Mike that should be said is I think it lends credence to the malfunctioning ship theory is until they get out into the open water, the ship is being piloted by what is known as a pilot 
who yeah. knows that area. And they, they specialize in that hunk of water to get it out. So it wasn't more, even more the captain. More credence to the fact that it might have been a mechanical That's failure, That's what I think, yeah. yeah. Which had to be uh, horrific for everybody involved. Uh, uh, people, at least as we came to tape, were uh, still on that ship. And, uh, you yeah, know, this show has a long tail. You'll know more yeah. answers uh, about this. So we just wanted to say, you know, what a uh, just stunning tragedy. Mm. And to, to think, you know, it's interesting when you say, that that type of design, you know, they're all into well, all bridges are suspension bridges are, but yeah, everything the true. idea of being able to bring it down with with that impact, it's just I, it's weird to say, but I do look forward to hearing about all of the details as to uh, uh, what happened. But that's a close knit, you know, that's a big little city in my opinion. It's a oh yeah, close knit community up there, and it sucks. But it also. Really <sighs> Don't you think we're past this sh- this stuff happening? Like, You'd like to think so, yeah, but no then way. you see the crumbling infrastructure of major cities in America. Yeah, yeah but I mean, it really is, Oscar. The when thing you isn't take... small. The thing is massive. Yeah, but when you take someone through a major city like Washington D.C. when they're from out of town, and you have to apologize for the way the roads look because of our crumbling infrastructure. Yeah, you think the bridges are that point. far behind? It's no. a valid point. No, I, I think the idea that we could hit a bridge and it could. You know, basically a fender bender and take yeah. the whole thing down. Well, yeah, you're done. That's I. Le- that's what I will be most curious about after we find out. You know, nothing would make me more. The happy. bridge stopped the cargo ship. It's not like it, qu- it like crushed right through like some sort of sailboat on. Some, yeah, you know. and we'll get the the close up yeah. pictures of what yeah. these uh, pylons look like and where it's connected. But it looked to me uh, that there was an element of uh, suspension. On those giant spans, God, so fragile when you think mm-hmm. about it, man. It is. I mean, as somebody who lived uh, down on the eastern shore of Maryland and made his way across the Bay Bridge. Oh, my God. I think the largest container ship in the world would hit one of those solid blocks of concrete and not do a damn thing. You I know, don't know. I think there was a uh, they weigh so to it. they weigh so much though, think, and that um, weighs that bears into it. Even well, if you've seen just, the Bay Bridge, you know, with that poured concrete that they have. Yeah, there, but I mean, massive. still, that the, the ship weighed more than the concrete. Mm. What is this going to mean for the bridge people that are scared of going over bridges? Carla said to me this morning, "Don't let Michael see this." He was it was on, of course, when he came mm-hmm. in, and he you know he didn't get phased by it. But it's like. You know, we've done bits on people that. Uh, who was the person that was Maddie Massiello? With this, uh, Maddie. Maddie hated bridges. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you now know, we I know why. Say, oh yeah. my god! Oh my god! It, you know, it will be what happened to the ship. It will be how many people, and that's the number one thing right now. It's going to be days, I think, yeah. before we know the uh, total of how many people. If you were. had a cruise, it's canceled. Uh, yeah, it, out of Baltimore, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be uh, – that's right. All the things that just keep piling on to this. And, mm-hmm. uh, I, to be honest with you, I think it's going to go recovery and then get that crap out of the water. Those are things I think that can happen relatively quickly compared to the rebuilding of the bridge. But then you're going to have to uh, you know, redo the bridge, and that's going to affect it. But Years. there's a lot of commerce that comes in and out of that. You know, If mm-hmm. you were waiting for a Toyota – uh, you know, that might yeah. be a problem for you. Uh, True. Right now. They always right. get you, get us. It always happens to us. We're like, ah, oh, look, this is what a dealer is going to say. A dealer is going to say, look, prices started coming down. And then that barge, yeah, like, that cargo ship hit the bridge. And, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have just... to, we're going to have to charge you a morning sub tax. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gentlemen, we have another, uh, problem that I'd like to discuss. Certainly nothing. Uh, of the magnitude. Well, we that's what we do, Mike. We, we solve problems. We solve problems. We're not, not able to solve that today. However, I have to say, uh, a good long time ago, I was out uh, at a an ophthalmologist's office, and I had complained about a red spot on the inside of my eye. Mm-hmm. And he had said to me that uh, this is uh, something that occurs with people that work outside Right. Or are outside a large portion of the day. Well, I uh, four to five hours, uh, three to four days a week, I'm outside. And he said, yeah, it's essentially a sunburn on your eye. Mm-hmm. And ever since that time, mm-hmm. I, uh, I used lubricating drops. And I actually put a steroid in my eye. And then yesterday... Had you been I'm, using lubricating drops prior to this, but not yes, on but your not eye? Yes, but not in my eye. Right, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Just a little dabble do. When Carla wants to play man. Um, That's disgusting. How did you get a sunburn there? <laughs> I got another sunburn. I got another sunburn. On your eye? On my eye. You want to see oh, it? God. No. I've even got a visual aid for you right now. I hope this works. Okay. I've rehearsed it. Okay. Here we go. It didn't work. I hate well, my life. At least you hoped. Can you God see? Hold on a second. God damn it. I, I feel like a sunburn on your eye would. would um, oh, maybe if I just use the right you, remote, you stupid fuck. Mike, you can't be expected to spot the remote if you have a I sunburned eye. I want this eye. part edited out because I tried really hard. Okay. To do it correctly. No. All right. That's the social. Are you kidding me? That was so natural. <laughs> well, then, if you're going to include, if that's the social, let's see the real one. Are you ready? Okay, yeah. Hit yes, the music, go. guys. Here we go. <laughs> Better. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Mike, it looks like a bowl of tomato soup. What is look going like on you there? You have some sort of cataract. Yeah. No, it's not a cataract. Thank you very much, but I'll do it again because I like the effect. <laughs> That was perfect. That was. That but you was know perfect. what I wish I had? I wish I had the footage of you that earlier cool. today practicing that. <laughs> it was five seconds. That was cool. You worked it <laughs> Hours out. Hours of practice. You worked it out. You literally you worked it out. Monitor remote. Time. <laughs> Camera remote. They're both black. Same size. Yes. They're not just both black. They're the exact same rectangular size. <gasps> where, does it say, it. where does it say zoom on the television remote? It doesn't. I don't look at it because I'm looking at you guys. Don't you understand? <laughs> but, Mike, I understand. That's great. I understand. This morning, I could not get a call out on my cell phone at all. <laughs> F you, Rob. <laughs> F you, Rob. I swear to God. I try to do the. You know, when I do something, I like to rehearse it as many times as I can. <laughs> Hours and I still can't get myself in the right position. I have to freeze. All right, here we go again. Hey, Rob, anytime you mention my eye, that's a okay. test on the show today. Great. Yeah. I'll have to do that, you know? Okay, So, uh, you know, we're just concerned about everything. What is the, uh, all of what our is the prognosis? Is it the same eye or different eye? <laughs> oh, I don't know whether to go up or down. Oscar brings up a good point. Is it Same always eye. been? It's always been. Is that your left eye? Same eye, but um, you know, as you might have remembered, <laughs> I'm in between insurance. Yes, I'm in yes. between insurance oh, companies. This is right true. That's right. Yeah. I've yeah. decided that I'm uh, I'm leaning very strongly towards Humana. Mm. I don't know about Humana. I don't know enough about it. Well, I Mac, know. Keeps you know anything you regular. about Humana? Uh, only that they exist. I don't know anything beyond that. What's your insurance company, Mac? Uh, Care First. Care First. You're not with Rich Guy Insurance. No. Isn't Care First Blue Cross? Blue My Shield? parents. I can't get. Is that yeah. Blue Sh Blue Cross? Correct. That's, that's what, what I am that's what uh, down here. Yeah, why do they? Blue Cross, Blue Cross, why would they Blue change their name with such a great heritage behind? It's, 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 it's a name. It's, it's the name of the company. It's like it's the, Care Florida First, Blue, Blue is Cross, Blue Cross. Blue Shield, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All yeah. right. Okay. Are we all Blue Shield families? No, I'm Cigna. Oh, how do you like Cigna? Cigna? Love it. Now, it, let me see if Rob's got the comedy chip, you know, mm -hmm. and I'll stand by here. Uh, hey, Rob. Yes, Mike. Why do you go with Cigna? Well, because they provide vision coverage for my eye. Oh. It does do look I pass? Do I have the comedy chip? It does look gross, <laughs> by the way. It, it does. Is gross. Your eye. But yeah. thank is God it, is for it weepy? Uh, refresh uh, gel drops. No, it's not really weepy because uh, if it was weepy, I'd, I'd notice it in the morning. But it's Was fine. it weepy oh. when you found out you didn't have insurance? <laughs> By the way, I wore my hat, uh, yes. my red hat. Yeah. And, and we're all in hats today. Yeah. Let me say this, okay? There are three hats that were given out of the entire run of hats. That's how mm -hmm. that's how close our margins are. Remember radio stations we'd throw them out like they were gumdrops, mm -hmm. you know. No these are the here. three free hats. The three principals got three free yes. hats. Right. That's it. That's it. Carla didn't even get a hat. And I'm sitting here and I picked 
this one, the red one. And I am telling you that my son said to me when I pulled into the parking lot, Dad, can you take that hat off? You've got a, another hat up front. I said, why do you want me? He said, Dad, it looks like a mega hat. <laughs> oh, no. He didn't want me to wear You know what you should have hat. told him? You should have told him you need to wear this hat because it keeps the sun out of okay, hold on a second. Okay. Your, your eyes. Oh no! Do you feel like so he's back on the eye? Okay, does, I'll deal with the eye. Does the right. does the red one? The, the red, red hat, hat or the, the red, red eye? Hat, not the red eye. Does okay. the red, red hat? hat. See, it's got a T. Like from afar, look like look it to, does look does look like, like Trump. Trump. Yeah. It does. Oh, oh my God! It does. No, it I'm does. squinting, and no, I weren't just, the red hats much. the last to sell out. They were. Yes. Right. Yeah, yes. they were. I think yeah. that's the reason. Hmm. I already have a phenomenal idea for the fall for hats. Like, but you are making like podcasting great best. again, Mike. <laughs> there. What? By the way. Now listen, I I, yeah. I know they're sold out. I don't, I don't often done. get they're done. I don't get political. Let me tell you something about Oscar's friends over at the Lincoln Project. Mm -hmm. All right, do you know what Democrats need to win elections? Democrats need Republicans, Republicans or former Republicans like those dudes over at the Lincoln Project. Good folks, smart. I folks. spent an hour going through. All of their videos. Oh, they're great. And their videos. No not mercy. Just their, not just no their. No mercy. Uh, oh, no mercy. Yeah. And there is one about Phantom of the Opera that is yeah. as oh, yeah. funny Fantastic. as a, just incredible. Uh, you know, don't piss those guys off. No. I hope I never piss those guys off. That's for sure. They, and again, uh, while we're not being political, uh, kudos to our president, uh, Joe Biden, who commented on a uh, an X, a tweet from former President Donald Trump, where Donald Trump said that they had the, uh, I guess, the player guest at his golf course and that he had won. the senior golf championship. He won both contests. <laughs> he and won Joe Biden. Both. Congratulated him on such a great accomplishment. Did he really? Yes. That he so retweeted. Funny. Yeah, it was so funny. That is so funny. You won both. <laughs> man, oh man, dear leader. There you go. That's uh, that's incredible. So anyway, I'll uh, I'm gonna do the yeah, sunglasses here's, today. Here's and the see quote. How the eye does. <laughs> yeah. President Joe Biden. Congratulations, Donald. Quite the accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> More of that. I want more that of that. Fun. Please, that was great. I love it. Please do it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Rob Spiewak, we're moving along right now. Please. And uh, I wanted to ask you yesterday, Oscar and I were concerned about your zeal to uh, just run up to a concert where a uh, someone had offered you tickets without no, this is any not, vetting. This is revisionist history. That's exactly what happened. No, you were upset that I hadn't replied yet. No. no, we were, con yes. we were no, we concerned that you weren't you what you were your going course to. of action was going to be. Are you going to meet this guy prior? Are you going to do some extreme vetting? What's the story? He said, no, I was just going to go up to the concert. Well, here's what I wrote him yesterday as soon correct as we me keep if the I'm mics wrong, off. Which is what you were going to do, correct? If, that, well, if all things have been equal and we hadn't given you the grief, you want to go see the show so bad. What's no, the show No, 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 no. It's uh, Jeff Lynn and Yellow's Farewell Tour. Yellow, great show. Yeah. And you know what? I wasn't going to do that. That's what I envisioned it would go, how it would go. Because I'm okay. not going to like pick the guy up. We're not going to meet. Anyway, so I No, wrote, you were going to meet at the show. Yep. Yeah, that was my theory. That was in theory. That's so what I was you do. are confirming our assumption, and that's why we were concerned, that you weren't going to do some background. Well- what happened is yesterday, no matter what I said, I got yelled at. But you this is how we were stop. concerned no, for you. No, no, it's true. No, no, it is. No, Robbie. No, Robbie, Mike. you are overblowing it. This is your passive aggressive. No, that Oscar, you're... I'll be aggressive here. Oscar said, why haven't you replied to him yet? He's going to give those tickets to another person. Yes. He's going to think you're not interested. So by not getting back to him, by playing it a little cool, that wasn't the right move. But- I envisioned if it happened, we would meet there. But this is what I wrote the guy. Can I interrupt yesterday. you first? Though? Please, I wish Please. you would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the issue there the issue was multifold. 
Yes, right. it was a it was an onion. The, these are the three, and the reason you got yelled at about everything is because you made several mistakes in this equation. All right, <laughs> mistakes that uh, mistakes that I would never do if I was president. No, <laughs> mistakes that were as follows: a, not vetting the person, right? right. Doing no research uh, without contacting them, no, no, none whatsoever. B. Not doing all of this, if you were interested in the show, in a timely manner, yes. including if you had vetted him, getting him, getting back to him within a couple of hours, which right. is what I would have done if it was something I really wanted to, you know, attend. And B, today, coming in here and blaming... What the hell was that? I just heard we, something We didn't like, hear anything. Oh, like you're the haunted. Dog howling. Anyway, so that's what... All right. Oh, okay. I know what it is. What is it? Scared it? me. That's just the whole bridge thing's got me a little. I understand. Out, you know, it's just so, a trash truck outside. I uh, I wrote to the gentleman and I did vet him yesterday. As soon as we finished, what did you find I, out? I went through and I went onto Facebook. I d- could not really determine what his name was. Great effort. Than- <laughs> Wait a second. He's right because all you had was a weird email. A weird email. Now, he said his name was Paul. I searched all of my friends named Paul on Facebook. What was that, Mike? Huh? I saw you do something. What were you doing with your finger? I didn't do anything. You did something. And you would see it, too, if you used your eye. (laughs) Okay. Hold on a second. (laughs) Very good. And we stand. What? No, I hit the wrong. (laughs) You caught me by surprise. Jesus Christ. No, of course you went to this Facebook. This show's falling apart. Well, I mean, that's my social media. And okay. I don't have a, a last name for him, so I searched all my Facebook friends named Paul, and no one came up living in Herndon. But Rob, all I know is that he's Paul from Herndon. I, I would just drop his email address into Facebook, and then the email address associated with that profile, if there is one, would pop up. I didn't know you could do that. That's very brilliant. Fair enough. Okay. But I did write to the guy. He was insincere when he said very brilliant. No, I thought I, I didn't I thought know most you could do that. that. No, was PA. No, what's that? That was PA. It was not passive aggressive. PA. <laughs> yeah, just call me Paul. I'm Paul. Howdy, Paul. <laughs> well, I thought it was. <laughs> I, I get it. Hey, you know, Oscar, how I could have researched him is on my iPhone. (laughs) So dumb. Anyway, so I wrote to the guy. Oh, I didn't want to. Oh, no. Are we done? I I hit the... uh, (laughs) Yes. I'm such a bad boy. I wrote to the guy. I said, hi, Paul from Herndon, because that's all I know. So nice of you to think of me. I'd love to go and see Jeff Lynn's farewell. As you may have guessed, I'm a big fan. Are we Facebook friends, by the way? Either way, shoot me your phone number so we can chat. I look forward to it. And again, thank you for your generosity. I sent that at, uh, let's see, I can give you the exact time, 12.01 yesterday. A.M.? Yeah, uh, no, <laughs> right after the show, 12.01 p.m., right after noon. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah. Okay. I, then, I thought it might have been midnight. No. And then, Mike, when I woke up this morning, I was yes. very pleased to report no reply. So you think he's just duping you? Either that or he is, uh, maybe he's not real big on replying to email. Maybe he moved on. He could have moved on and that would be a sod. That yeah. would be sod. Because you, you were too slow. I saw. Yeah. I, I saw with- and overly eager after being too slow. That you were both. I'm not. Yes. I couldn't have missed him not, anymore. You were over eager and you didn't vet him, but then you were too slow in general yeah. to move. I think it all worked out, though, because if I'm not mistaken, Rob, because <laughs> because I get CC'd on your emails, I'm not proud of that. Hopefully one day that will stop. Uh, that you're getting new friend applications trickling in. Occasionally. Yeah, I saw, like a, I saw one or two yesterday within my email chain that came to Rob. That said, um, that said, hi, sober listener here. <laughs> you have a I bunch of sober friends that. coming well, through. Well, sober friends do, they, they reach out, and I think that's one of their big selling points yeah. is that they're sober. Yeah. Um, and so, and I also got a lot of lovely responses from when I talked about the two year, my two yeah, years. Correct, correct. But 
<laughs> None of them want to be my friends. They but just I have were to saying say this. thank you. I, I want to ask you this because you so eloquently. What, what did I miss? I missed something. What did he say? They just none of the sober, uh, sober listeners that are congratulating him on his two years of sobriety want to be his friend. They're just congratulating. Him. Yeah, it was essentially like <laughs> sending a, a thank you card. And not even that. Me. It was more like a welcome to the neighborhood yeah. card. It was so noncommittal. Never All right, let me say what I want to say. <laughs> okay, after. Uh, your eloquent description of uh, you know, your journey and getting right. sober and what you're doing. Do you, uh, and this is a legitimate question, do you like the idea? Is the idea legit to you of uh, finding people that are in similar such situations that uh, for me, it's could be not your even, friends? For me, the sobriety is really not a factor. I mean, I love the fact that people reach out and they say it, but if we go out to dinner and they have a beer, I can have a soda. I can so have it a doesn't glass of water. really matter. It doesn't really matter. No, okay. not to me. Um, right. I went to a. I think there are people that it matters to and people that it doesn't matter to. On Saturday, I went to a party. Uh, my buddy John, his dog uh, Frankie, just turned fifteen. Is a pug. Oh. A little. Oh, oh, is he gray? Oh, like a <laughs> looks like a dust bunny. Looks like a <laughs> like a burl hives. Yeah, he does. He really does. Silver and gold. But they did a party. Little face. <laughs> they did a party just based. It was an excuse to have a party for this dog. Mm -hmm. And Frankie's a good dog, and they got him a taco costume, cute. And they served tacos, which were fantastic. And everyone was having margaritas, and I was having a soda. And it was fine. I had a great time. So you, you handle that. I know yeah, you're around yeah. us. I know you handle yeah. that. So that's so uh, that's cool. and you handled me. <laughs> handled me for many years. That's the mm -hmm. least I can do. Well, you were never so, anything but I mean I, I well, think that there really I didn't think you you weren't like me. You were but you, I certainly behaved more badly than any of Mike, the three of us you, when we were together. You were gone for ten years almost. You've been in Florida for ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you didn't have to handle Rob. You didn't have to handle the after headers. like our drinking shows on the air. Not even during the pandemic, pre-pandemic, like in. Mm. Oh, so he 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 had Rob to be handled. Rob was a handful. Yeah. Really. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So it got well progressively. It got more worse. Intense. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And then once I got the handling myself being drunk together, then my liver gave out. So if it's one thing, How it's another. Dare you? <laughs> yeah, that's when always you when something. You, when you took your final fall. You do. Uh, you do. We, you decided to move it on into the house. It's, it's hard. Right. It's hard to realize, and this is. It's funny because even saying it seems so strange yeah. that we haven't done a show together in the same room with Mike, the three of us, for almost a decade. No, a decade. Yeah. Does it feel That's like true. a decade? And that was that would be in the studio in Georgetown. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? What? We're up on a break. <laughs> no, but does it feel like a decade to you, Mike? Um, no. No. It feels like just yesterday we were Manassas trying to figure out how to use webcams. I, I feel that way. Right? And it really... It, it, I My son this morning wakes up and crawls into my lap, and he's sitting there watching the news with me. And I look down at his legs... Yeah. And his legs are as big as my legs. Yeah. They are... He is like an athletic... Yeah. 10 year old who to is be growing fair, rapidly mike to be fair you have been skipping leg day ah <laughs> but that you subject coming you, up mike, way too much you lately. i have my last picture with you in the in the big studio in your house is with holding michael the size he has the size of a cashew peanut like just hold, yeah. you're holding him in your hands mm, i love so cashew fast. peanuts and, the, so and then fast. but it just blew by yeah no I know it's like the blink of an eye. It's uh, and you know what? Uh, I had this thought just before we go to break. I'll throw this in since I was uh, no, no. I'm going to save it. I'm dealing with uh, 65 just around the corner. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of moving parts yeah. with that. Right. All right. And I I have an interesting take on what, exactly what uh, Oscar was talking about with that old clock on the wall, <laughs> moving, yeah. moving. And I think you'll enjoy that. But uh, we have to do a roundtable before that. And, Mike, you uh, know what John Tesh would say? Uh, intelligence for your life. I'm John Tesh. He and, would uh, say uh, the days are long, <laughs> but the years are short. I I. Funny. Oh no. 
be right back, everybody. Oh, you started it again. Don't start it again. No. What you want, Mike, is this. Kill that music, and we can go right to this, and all is well. Thank you. A little tight on the shot there, yeah. Pachango. <laughs> I am now, the days of wanting a board opera have set, have set sail. <laughs> I'm trying to do five different things. Let's talk about our friends at Legacy Box, shall we? Call uh, me, Paul. Just like us. Hey, hey, Paul, come on. Hey, Paul. Ah! Axe. Uh, anyway, Legacy Box, you're going to love it. Spring cleaning is upon us. There's one meaningful box you don't throw away. It's the stuff that has all your photos and your yes. videotapes and all the stuff in your closet uh, filled with your family's stuff. And the memories, preserve them for eternity. Legacy Box makes it easy. Load your Legacy Box with your old tapes, your film, your pictures, slides. Send it off. You'll get back uh, what you need on a thumb drive or on the cloud. Preserving your family's heritage is the only way to ensure that your legacy is safe for generations. Join over one million families that have trusted Legacy Box. Don't wait. It's simple, affordable, and they take care of everything. Thanks to Legacy Box, Rob can see Julia pre-tattoos and Robert III before he was 12 feet tall. True. Yay for Legacy Box. Check <laughs> protecting your memories off your spring cleaning to-do list with Legacy Box. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to shop their $9 tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to unlock this incredible offer. Hey, look at the Kraken. He offered concert tickets, then took them away. <laughs> Hello, wow, Kraken. That's incredible. Hello, Kraken, buddy. Uh, we start the uh, roundtable, and uh, Mac, I do uh, second what uh, Oscar texted you, so please, uh, if you can do that, uh, pop that up anytime. Uh, you know, we just, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we'll reference it throughout the show because it's such a terrible, terrible, terrible mm -hmm. day for the city of Baltimore with the entire collapse of one of the largest bridges in the city, uh, the Francis Scott Key, probably the largest bridge in the city, the Francis Scott Key uh, Bridge. Here it is here. Uh, being hit by the container ship, and you'll see what happens after it uh, is hit. The entire structure, that is a massive mile-and-a-half-long bridge that collapses into the Patapsco River outside of Baltimore. And uh, You know what it looks like? It looks seriously. like when they implode a building, like in Las Vegas, where they yeah. have all those precisely Yeah, you couldn't explosions. bring it down any more effectively. No, uh, it's just amazing the way it happens. Uh, let's uh, turn to something a little bit uh, lighter, but nonetheless serious. Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know that name, right? Yes, yeah. you do. Arnold Schwarzenegger had surgery last Monday uh, to become a little bit more of a machine. He got a pacemaker put in. Mm. He is 76 years old. In case you forgot, he has a bicuspid aortic valve. Yes. What's that, a tooth in there? How does that <laughs> No, it's, it's a flaw in his heart. Uh, he knew, previously had open heart thing. surgery in 97 to have a, uh, his pulmonary and aortic valves replaced. But since they don't last forever, he had to get one replaced in 2018 and the other in 2020. Arnold says he needed the pacemaker because the scar tissue from his last surgery had been uh, giving him an irregular heartbeat the last few years. He says he's doing great, and by the end of last week, he was with Jane Fonda, another uh, senior citizen, yeah. at an environmental event. He said, quote, I can't do my serious training in the gym for a while, but I will be 100% ready for FUBAR Season 2 next month. Well, at least he's ready for it. Yes. FUBAR Season 1 go. was great. It was Good okay. Fortune. I think it, it fell apart towards the yeah, end. It started very this is, strong. This is what I... I think we're spoiled. Well, good. Netflix us gives spoiled. us so many great shows that if something's not perfect, we're like, eh, it didn't really work till the end. It's basically free for the amount of money we pay for Netflix. It is. Yeah, I guess you're right. So we'll watch it. Hey, Arnold, is it true that your uh, pacemaker was built by BMW? I just wanted to say, um, <laughs> Oscar, thank you for the rave review. Uh, Rob, you're welcome, Governor. Yes. Uh, I, I wish you to go back and uh, watch the things uh, the that Fubar? we did with the FUBAR. And, uh, Schwarzenegger's you know. on my list. Like, If yeah. I saw him and he was like, hey, uh, Oscar, I'm having a bad day. Do you mind just blowing me? I think I'd have to do it. 
Uh, I'll, uh, I'll Hop be on in, the washing machine, Oscar. I'll be flying into D.C. tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, homes belonging to Sean Diddy Combs in L.A., New York, and Miami were raided by the Department of Homeland Security yesterday. They won't say anything except that it's part of an ongoing investigation. That's not good. Mm. Diddy has been hit with numerous sexual misconduct allegations and lawsuits recently for crimes including rape, sex trafficking, and sex with a minor. One of his victims was former girlfriend Cassie. Diddy settled with her without admitting guilt, but after yesterday's raids, her attorney said, quote, Hopefully this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Wow. wow. Uh, uh, TMZ. Yes, go ahead, Oscar. Look, there's been so much smoke around this uh, this story. The fact that the FBI raided two homes at one point screams yep. something was about to get destroyed. Mm-hmm. And um, but like evidence. And if it comes to light that this guy is being taken down, it would be one of the biggest stories in show business Oh, incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, really? And I guess it involves perhaps sex trafficking, oh, yeah. which is just, ugh, God almighty, how horrible is that? We'll I know that uh, if it happens, there's one guy who would be happy is Dan Schneider from Nickelodeon. Get him off the front page. Yes. Because he's dealing with some bad times right now. What did so. he do? Oh, haven't you seen or oh, heard Mike, about the this documentary? Is so Quiet oh, on the guy set? that was like uh, abusing people on the set of oh. uh, like uh, Blue's Clues. Yeah. Blue's Clues. <laughs> Blue's Clues. <laughs> The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, all that. More Nickelodeon. Like that. Uh, iCarly. Yeah, Nickelodeon. I thought it was Blues Clues. That's a different dude. No, no, no. Different guy. Different Is that guy. another abusive situation? Uh, Wasn't there something think, going on with the the former? The, I saw Steve. Well, Steve just came out. Now, Nickelodeon, uh, Blues Clues was under the Nickelodeon umbrella. So and Steve released a video saying, are you okay? Because this oh, okay. has really mixed up a lot of people. So it's related in a way. But- it's extraordinarily triggering, but especially for people that have kids my age that grew up around all these shows. If you watch this documentary, I think it's on Max. It's called it Quiet Set. Watch it. And it's horrifying. Oh boy. And poor Drake Bell from Drake and Josh, who's really? finally coming clean to what was done to him. It's it's heartbreaking. Well, back it's, to Diddy. Uh, TMZ yeah, has some pictures and video from uh, two of the raids, including a shot of Diddy's sons. Doesn't say how old they are. Justin and uh, King in handcuffs. Nobody's King! saying saying that. <laughs> God. Hi. <laughs> Let go of me. Why are the handcuffs? They hurt, right? <laughs> Can you loosen them a bit, please? King. <laughs> King Combs. <laughs> King Combs. He's uh, a good boy, King Combs. There we go. <laughs> Nobody's saying they did anything wrong, though. Cops could have done it as a precaution uh, during the raids. We'll see what happens. To we'll King. see what happens. Uh, here's something you probably didn't know about The Price is Right. Oh, okay. They're totally prepared in the event that a contestant's bladder goes rogue. Oh, no. Former producer, remember this guy, the Jeopardy guy, Mike Richards? That guy, yeah. The guy that hosted Jeopardy for a week, right? He said uh, they had a system in place in case someone peed their pants. He said he never saw it happen, but there were curtains and a blow dryer and a pair of (laughs) sweat pants. Oh. Just in case. Oh, another lady from Samoa has wet her petty. Well, you know, it could have been a Diane. She got older before she stopped being a Die, I will tell you now, (laughs) Diane Parkinson was never incompetent. (laughs) That's what it meant to me. Thank you, Uh, Bob. (laughs) Richards also produced Jeopardy, and uh, you might remember him as Alex Trebek's replacement for an hour. Uh, He got removed because of stuff he previously said. Uh, and also uh, some wrongful termination and sexual harassment lawsuits from models uh, during his time on Price. Does Jeopardy have piss protocol? I'm not <laughs> sure. Let's take a look at Ken Jennings. Yes, sir. Oh, stay oh. behind the podium, Ken. My God, that gray suit has got a big dark stain on it. Trader Joe's just up the price of a single banana. Come, Mr. Trady Joe, trade me banana. Daylight, come and me one go home. Uh, they did it by more than 
They've been selling bananas for 19 cents a piece since 2001. God bless them. And it's something they brag about. The displays say stuff like, same price for... T- I'm still Bob Barker. <laughs> Bob Barker doing Trader Joe's. <laughs> uh, same price for 20 years running. <laughs> <laughs> but they just upped it to 23 cents. That is a 21% increase, but it's also just four cents more. Uh, so who cares? Trader Joe's. I don't like Trader Joe's. Why, why don't you like I've never been. Trader Joe's? I don't. It always looks like uh, if I went in there, it would smell like feet. Julia loves it because of their uh, their uh, gluten and dairy free offerings. They make very good it jelly. Smells uh, like what do you call feet. It? Yeah. It's just why? Like it's because like it's, it's so uh, casual. Know. No, I mean, like no, it's, people with uh, like uh, smelly feet and nose piercings. Yeah, That's Mike, what don't I you think it's uh, it looks a little too organic? Yeah, so and, and then the fr- you know, and then too much frozen stuff. When you go in with this organic image, and then everything they have is in these big deep freeze aisles. You know, I don't want a piece of organic tilapia that's been in there for six months. You know, give me a break. But if- how much would you pay for it <laughs> if the price is right? There you go. Finally. Rebel Wilson has revealed the identity of the, quote, massive a-hole who's been trying to stop her from writing him about him in her upcoming book, Rebel Rising. Mm. And are you ready for who it I'm is? I'm over here now. No, it's not Dice Clay. Oh, I it's, thought it might be Dice. It's Borat himself, Sasha Baron Cohen. Mm. Oh, no. They worked together in the 2016 comedy The Brothers Grimsby, and obviously she did not enjoy it. As for the book which is scheduled to come out next Tuesday. Uh, She says, quote, I will not be bullied or silenced by high-priced lawyers or PR crisis managers. For the record, Sasha is denying her claims. His rape, uh, his rape. No, no. His rep, sorry about that, says, quote, while we appreciate the importance <laughs> of speaking out, these demonstrably false claims are la 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 la. <laughs> these false claims are directly contradicted by extensive detailed evidence, including contemporaneous documents, film footage, and eyewitness accounts from those present before, during, and after the production of The Brothers Grimsby. Uh, in an interview a decade ago, Rebel uh, said Sasha was constantly harassing her on the set, doing stuff like trying to make her get naked. And in one scene, he even tried to make her stick a finger up his butt. Oh, my God. Wow. Don't know. He actually uh, compromised uh, by having her slap his naked buttocks. Okay. That's a good so, compromise. That's a win-win. There's that. I, you my, know how my. I would arrange this. I, what I would say to them would be, uh, I want to see who's telling the truth. Get them both in a room and uh, have them look me right in the eye. <laughs> We'll take a short break, everyone. (laughs) Clarice, have your lamp stop crying. Uh, We've got more fun and more thrills uh, coming up uh, on the Mike O'Mara Show. Did Mac ever find the picture of the uh, car Oscar wanted to see? I don't think he's... No, I have it. Thanks for keeping the secret. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) You must never tell. (laughs) (laughs) Keep it to yourself, Mac. That's right, close to the vest. Uh, did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? Get ahead of it with Nutrafol. Nutrafol's drug-free, whole-body approach promotes hair growth from within. Take their hair wellness quiz at Nutrafol.com slash men for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. You can purchase online with no prescription or doctor's visits required. Free shipping and you'll see results in three to six months. Thanks to Nutrafol, Oscar is seeing thicker hair, and the sexuality is palpable, even though he's got it under a hat this morning. He's seeing the thicker hair. It's wonderful. Look out, ladies. Uh, For a limited time, look at that. Look at that hair. Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code TMOS. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. And enter the promo code TMOS. That's Nutrafol.com slash men. Promo code T-M-O-S. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, welcome back to the show. Whoa, whoa. Uh, Oscar, you're a car person. Yes. I have been, uh, I've been searching quite a bit because uh, my wife's lease is up in August. Now, we should be clear. This is the lease on the car, not the wife. Not her. Right. 
That's it. It's over. She's <laughs> leaving. I have looked at every car imaginable. I have looked at everything from Chevys to Subarus to BMWs to Bentleys that are like 400 years old with 100,000 miles on them. I've looked at so much, and I have even contemplated holding on to this car, which I've uh, run the miles up a little over the lease, because the depreciation factor is so significant that it might be I'm kind of fond of the car, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, Oscar's have, always looking at Have cars you looked at well. Kia? We, yeah. We, Matt, before, yeah. You, um, before you bring up my Facebook Marketplace uh, dream ride, will you please bring up – I'm glad you brought this up, Mike – the Buick and Vista – what do you know about the Buick in Vista? I've seen them. The last time I drove a Buick was a Lucerne. It was a rental car. And you know what? It I was like the quite Enclave. Nice. I had it as a rental. I had an Enclave. Mm -hmm. The Buick in it's Vista. Amazing the Buick is still, it's amazing the Buick is still around. I Old agree with school. you. Um, we were watching the, the Iowa-West Virginia game yesterday, my father and I. Mm -hmm. And um, this commercial came up. And he said, ah, el Buick, sigue vive. <laughs> Oh, you uh, and then we pulled up this review from um, from Motor Trend. It starts at twenty two thousand dollars, and you can get the top of the line guy for thirty one. Mm -hmm. That's quite reasonable it's for, and that's the car right there. The crossover. That's a Buick. Wow. Yeah, but uh, I happen to have a big fat book that I keep next to my toilet. And the big fat book is it a has, journal? Is, it's the Consumer Reports oh. 2024 Automobiles. Hmm. If you give me one second, yes, I'm going to go I'd get. I'd love it. to hear more about and this. I think it's in there, but the I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, the Invista. Now I will be thank right you. Back. Yeah, I'm going to let that slide that he said <laughs> I. Uh, the wheels are beautiful on it, isn't it, cool? Mac? This is that's a Buick. That does not look Buicky at yeah. all. I'm, what is a Bu Buick supposed to look like? Uh, how it's about supposed this? to look like an old man Type car. in Buick okay. 1981 LeSabre. That's perfect. Because my That's father had one, that. Yeah. That's why he was drawn it to means this. The, did he buy it because in his language it meant the sword? No, he, he, I don't okay. think he had that. <laughs> Show the world what a LeSabre looks like, please. Yeah. That's a classic, classic uh, a, Buick. He had a blue one, big analog. Uh, clock. Yeah. Uh, that was it. It's like a Caprice with slightly more dynamic lines, but not really. I'm sure it's the same under the hood. And if that's a two-door or a four-door, I can't make it four -door. out. Four-door. Okay, good. No, yeah. this is, is a two-door. We're all blown. Oh, this photo with a, is a two-door. With a huge door. Yeah. <laughs> a four like yeah, thousand a gold door. door. Yeah, and then it's got those old man wheels, the yeah. bespoke wheels. and uh, He had that as, sure his, your father's as his weekend car. He is his. Uh, Did he not like his weekends? No, he liked. He was funny. He, it was so strange. He had a. Um, what is it? Look how thin Mike is. He had a. Speaking of nice lines. Yeah, that's, he's of course. Wow. Look at him. He's finally wearing clothes. Now there's. Here's his ass. Um, <laughs> nice. He had a ass. Jaguar XJ12. Yeah. Um, Vander Plus, something like that. I don't know. Well, that was a, that was. But his, that would that seem to be the. Car. But the Jag would seem to be the weekend. No, car. that More was his fun, daily right? go-to. But he could right. fit the whole family yeah. in a Lesabre. This is Mac, Mac asked what an here. old Buick used to look like, and then now go to the new picture. Yeah, the Invista. The Invista. E N V I S T A. I'm guessing. I like that you're still Invista. tactile with your media, Mike. Uh, I was uh, sitting at the. Oh, I just hit my thing. God damn it, Michael! What'd you do? Uh, I hit the wrong uh, button. Gotcha. Oh, okay. You know, all right. Yeah, that is good looking car right, right there. Now yeah, let's see how it's for four door you. crossover. We should describe it. It looks to me. It looks you know like, it looks like a Mercedes like? or a Lexus. I was gonna say. I was My gonna Mercedes. Say, I was gonna say the Tiguan. It looks like a Volkswagen Tiguan, which is also the Porsche. Did you guys crossover. lose? No, we're here. No, we've got you. Okay, just checking. All right. Okay. It looks solid as a rock. So I gave you digital. Love I love that you can just pull up a YouTube video and show. I have showed my old man a full review on a car. Yeah. And then he immediately goes into. Are you dissing me for having this magazine? No, I said you have a tactile approach to life. 
I don't yeah. have a tactile approach to life. I it look was... up reviews online as well, you Mike, um... <laughs> he was being PA. He was PA right there. God, I just happened to see this no, in the it... grocery store. I love store. that you still use a phone book, Mike. I think that's so great. Shut up, Rob. You don't pile on. <laughs> no, I'm telling you what he did. I'm the most tactile of us all. I'm tired I of still find... buy compact discs. <laughs> All right, let me see if there's an index. So my dad goes, and he's like, I wonder what the import to Bolivia is for a Buick. Because they have... Because <laughs> they have... Uh, they, what, they deliver it by drone, Is it called right? an Envision? Invista. Invista. Oh, wait a minute. And he says... Um, he's, because, Not in Because here. the tariff... It's an E. It starts with an E. Yeah, I know it starts with okay. an E, Mac. I don't need I'll, you I'll, piling I'll, on, too, for Christ's sake. I'll be over here Mike, if you need me. listen carefully. B U I C I have in this magazine the Enclave, the Encore, and the Envision. Yeah, so they don't. The Invista may be a little too new for the the tactile approach at the moment. Damn it, God, Oscar, you are God, such a dick. I went into dick. the bathroom to get this, and I He's get all my reviews. Such I a get, dick. All my reviews come from the bathroom. <laughs> No, I, I look at cars. The, all right. So my father looked at the tariffs for a Buick Invista into La Paz, yes. Bolivia. Yes. They have a hundred percent tariff on this vehicle. So so they'd have to double, have to the, double price? the price to get it in. No wonder they're selling them for nineteen <laughs> or whatever. Twenty two, though. I think that's a steal. Yeah, it is. It's right, even I'm at forty four, it's website not bad. Right now, all right. The recall alert. Oh no! Oh In Vista. no! There is one. By the way, Oscar's right. They are uh, the twenty twenty four Buick Invista uh, base MSRP range is twenty two to twenty eight thousand dollars. That's a deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, would you like to know the first take? Uh, the 2024 Invista expands the Buick line with a small, stylish model that morphs elements together from a car and an SUV, blah, 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 blah. Crossover. Uh, but it's not without compromises, mm. Oscar. Mm. Yeah, Oscar. That's what they say here. Not without compromise, as we have found in our initial time with our test uh -oh. car. Uh, the Invista is offered a blah, 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 blah. They tell you Get what a little engine. At. Get, da, da. I got to go down here. Impressions. There we are. Oh, the Invista has straightforward control. Thank you for telling me that's good. I appreciate that. The Invista has straightforward controls for the climate system with a combination of dials and physical buttons. These are easy to interpret. Okay. Tactile. So that's good. There are some quirks with the infotainment center. Uh, like having to select from the center screen. They all bitch about that. Yeah. Uh, the slightly elevated seat is appealing for it's higher than traditional sedans, but lower than most SUVs. Uh, front seats are firm with a flat back. Uh, great for see. old people. Right. Getting in and out. Uh, they, they go into great detail, which it's I'm got not a gonna... 1.8 consumer liter. report. You know, they want to keep yeah. you reading. So that's why they say uh, overview. Well, you think that's it. No, you want consumer reports. Mike, take. they're not out to get you. They're just writing an article. Uh, let's see. All right. The Invista employs a 137 horsepower, 1 1.2 1 liter .2. turbocharged three cylinder engine. Three six-speed automatic transmission. You can mow the backyard with it. I was going to go. say, if uh, great and flat terrain. The chief, <laughs> the chief reason to buy a small car with a three-cylinder engine is fuel economy. The Invista's EPA-rated uh, 30 miles per gallon combined. This seems like a solid estimate. They said that. Most common descriptor in our logbook for the handling is mundane no. the steering is isolated and rubbery mm. though it turns well uh body roll is well controlled becoming more pronounced at higher speeds we'll the general sense that. is that agility is not among its virtues mm. mike i hate to reuse a sound effect but here comes the invista <laughs> the back seat has a uh, good leg room and space to tuck feet under the front seats but realistically only two adults will comfortably fit there. Headroom is limited. Uh, many buyers are likely to miss out on the convenience of having the volume and station skip buttons behind the steering wheel because they are not labeled. Interacting with the uh, trip computer <laughs> is fussy, uh, though the center screen... What's this do? <laughs> if you just need a car from A to B, though, this is great. 
and uh, stylish. It the looks Invista, best. The Invista it, shines in terms of features for the buck, such as wireless Apple CarPlay, heated seats, steering wheel, and all the latest active safety features, uh, which all can be had for under $27,000. The heated seats are especially effective when the engine bursts into flames because you're driving 60 miles an hour on a three-cylinder. Mm. Oh, hold on. Uh -oh. Of course, those discerning customers demanding a more sophisticated driving experience, nicer fit and finish, and a more comfortable and quiet cabin should look elsewhere. <laughs> so, Oscar, yes. it's a bad idea to buy this car. Well, I'm not going to buy it. I just thought Mike could buy it. Thank you. I would no, no, I don't want to buy okay. that. Can you imagine Mike after a week trying to find the station skip button? He'd be out of his mind. You know, you know my car that I drive that you guys saw that I drove down here, the Beamer? Yeah. 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 Get that for the same amount of money now. Really? <laughs> Depreciation. Oh, no. Yeah. And that but doesn't have a three cylinder, that. does it? No, it's got a four cylinder. Not yeah, much more, but it's got a great engine for a four cylinder. That's a wonderful car. Uh, what about what about your BMW? Yeah, yeah. You so the 91, you go ahead and pull that up. When you, so I graduated, only 34 I graduated years 96 old, from high school. Uh -huh. So 91 is when you start like thinking about what you want to drive. And what, around that age, there was a, a, the Highline BMW, which is the sports car. Uh, and mm -hmm. this, this eight series, which was the, the coupe for those of you that are into cars was the dream car. Like that was the most expensive BMW you could buy. It's a two door. It's beautiful. And I am on Facebook Marketplace and someone in Rockville is selling it for $15,000. And I said, there's no way that car is worth $15,000 still, but it, apparently it is. Is that a, got pop up headlights? Yes. Wow. And cool. a good looking trunk. You know, Oscar, that would be a good car to buy. And you could listen to What's Up Doc Can We Rock by the Foo Schnickens in that car. It looks like it's rather well preserved. Yeah, I just I yeah. like seeing older vehicles that are not just preserved, but you remember when we were younger and you're like, if I could ever afford that car, and now you know you technically can afford that car. You're like, should I get that car? Yeah. You would be, and I'm sure you look all yeah. the time. But if you go on like car gurus, mm -hmm. and there are, it is stunning what certain cars depreciate for if you count their sticker price. It's mind blowing, really. Yeah. That uh, to pick up certain cars, but you still, I mean, to get a like a uh, a supercar, it would be you know you hundreds of thousands of dollars you get off the sticker price, but it's still you know money that most people can't afford yeah, to spend. My and my father it, uh, recently picked up a what I would call a supercar, um, and a, this original MSRP was one ninety two. Because they had the, mm -hmm. the the sticker price, the sticker um, in I guess in the glove, whoever had it, had it, sure. and he picked it up for under six figures, and it's still it's it's still it just baffles me how uh, within the span of four years you could lose you know six figures on a car because the people want the shiny. It's That's wild. What, it is. People, what is the percentage? Rich people. What is the percentage when you drive off the lot? It's like um, immediately ten percent, right? Just for take, just for buying. That's car. not. Uh, it's more than that for a lot of vehicles now. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, uh, it's it's incredible. Oscar, but... I wouldn't trust this uh, car. I'm not going to buy it. I just thought it was. It, I thought it. You know, it it it, it called. Me. If I had just a few money, and I had a three car garage, I would have been like, eh, it'll be fun to drive. So, Mike, yeah. let's go I back mean, to your you're mechanically. If you're mechanically inclined, it's cool to get a car like that because you can check you work, it out work on it. You can modify it. That'd yeah, there's fun. this guy, he's out of Florida that uh, I watch him online. I forgot what the guy's name is, but he buys like uh, beat to crap Ferraris and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and he works on them. It's yeah. special. You were going to say something, Rob, before. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you uh, real quick. If this is Oscar's Dream Car 91, that was when you were a senior in high school? No, I was a, I was a freshman. Oh, okay, so he was just in high school. What was the dream car for the generation of yours that, when you were in high school? Like, what would be a dream car? Me? Yeah. Like, uh, I, I Oscar think, uh, has lusted after this for years. I, I know that my mom and uh, dad uh, let me have one, and it was still the hot car of the day, the Model T. It was really <laughs> fantastic. I really enjoyed that. No, you, you, All the two parts two were you probably were like a Mustang Fastback, right? Uh, Cougar XR7, yeah. driven by my old man. It was fantastic. And my, uh, what did my sister drive? A Mercury Capri. Oh, and it was made of solid gold.
La la la. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Have fun in Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> that was so mean. Are you to finally get down to the weight? Are you? Are you to finally get down to the weight? That must you be a typo. Wanted? Are you, I'm trying to figure out what word would go there. Are you ready? Are you ready to get? Are you? Oh, you put ready. You put two instead of ready. I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. Are you ready to finally get down to the weight you've always wanted? I'm sorry, I had the cranial cramp there. Let's go. Yeah, probably read it fifteen thousand times. Dermglowskin.com is the ultimate destination for. Con- I don't want to read the commercial. I want to tell you that today. Just tell us. Today, 85 pounds today. Uh, started the journey at. When you uh, stood up, you look skinny. 326. 326. Yeah. And I go, by the way, I go by my all time high back in the day. That's okay. what I'm measuring, all right? Yeah, it was a long time between 326 and the 10 pounds at 316. And then I started up in earnest, so I'm counting it. You should. Right? Take it upstairs. You got a problem with that? Take it upstairs to the fat man. 241 oh, today. Yet. I'm about to <laughs> I'm about to move into the you know the two three O range, which is one step closer to the two two O range, which is college. It's weird. But can you stand uh, as up my real son quick? pointed out to me. And shake no. your ass. Don't do that, come on. Yeah, look how skinny he is. And those pants yeah. are loose on him. They yeah, are that's crazy. Him. Good for you. Good I, for you. Good. You look great. I feel I feel good, except for uh, you know this. Uh, experienced doctors, what? all you do is go what? to uh, hit the take weight loss the button. compliment, Mike. Thank you. Uh, go to dermglowskin.com, click on the weight loss button, and uh, you know, tee hee, be like me, and <laughs> uh, and and really, you know, it it rocks my world. How I wrote a post about yeah. it today that it's a feeling of peacefulness. It's a feeling of. Uh, Self-satisfaction that allows you to relax and enjoy things I never enjoyed. I never enjoyed walking into a store because I always felt like a fat Mm. guy. And I'm still a bit of a fat guy. I am. I'll be honest with you. And I got to, you know, I'm at that point now where I got to, you know, tone up what's left of the skin. (laughs) That's the way I would look at it. But man, oh man, 85 pounds. Never in my lot. wildest dreams did I think. Thank but you. Don't to you also feel like you have a lease, a new lease on life? I feel totally. And this like is not I a commercial. It's just. I, feel, I see my mom. She's no. she's she's got more energy. She's happier. I feel younger. Well, think about younger. this, Mike. And I've used this comparison. You turn before. that off for a minute. It's driving yeah. me out of my mind. I can use this compa- I've used this comparison before. When you started all this, you were. When you woke up in the morning every day carrying 17 bags of sugar around with you, yeah, always, yeah, and yeah, think yeah. about how that wears you down. I mean, I mean it I don't just even it think destroys about certain you. Things anymore, and I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there with this dinosaur next to me, this CPAP machine that looks like something out of the 1800s next to me, and I'm wondering, uh, you know, I still have the fear. I still have the fear of the of the backslide. I really do. You don't lose that overnight because that's a lifetime we're talking about here. But at the same time. Uh, I am dedicated to this program, and do you ever you know, worry about with all the weight loss? Do you ever worry about your eye? <laughs> what I say, Mike O'Mara? Do you ever worry about your eye, your left eye? No. Yes. <laughs> Hit the button. <laughs> ah, two buttons. <laughs> it's gotten worse. <laughs> The eye has gotten worse or the yes, effect? Yes, the eye's gotten worse. The eye's oh, yeah, terrible. Yeah, it has. It looks a little bit like an American flag. I want to go back to that doctor. I don't like him. <laughs> Dr. Polk? Yeah, he's just not He's dickish. <laughs> I don't want to deal with him. I really don't. Yeah, you, get the, you, know, you could scrape it off if you want. You could uh, you know, do that. You know? <laughs> scrape off the surface of my eye. But it's like, uh, you know, everybody... Has this once in a while, you know, you know that kind of doctor, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, Derm Glow. 
Oh, yeah, dermglow.com. Uh, Thank, Thank you. I have Thank to finish you. the commercial. Uh, let's see. Uh, d- 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 it's like a life-changing, game-changer, five stars. Everybody loves it. Go to dermglowskin.com. Thank Welcome you. back to the Mike O'Mara Show. We uh, have a, God, we've run out of time already on the mm-hmm. show. we got to get to this right away. Oh, my God, we're running so late today. I'm running late. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, what do I want to talk? Uh, restaurants requiring deposit. Yes. Two, two minutes. Go. All right. There is a new trend that restaurants are requiring non-refundable deposits when you make a reservation because they want to make sure you honor your reservation. Have you ever made a reservation and just blown it off? Uh, yeah, sure. So yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny you bring this up. Um, two reservations ago, one was at Nobu in D.C. that mm-hmm. if you didn't well, – if you, didn't, uh, if you didn't post, they would charge you. Um, Spencer. They would charge you $100 a person. Uh, and then the one in Boston uh, was at a, oh, God, what was it? A, so- a sake place in Boston just this past day. off uh, This app called Resi. Um, mm-hmm. They said that if we didn't post, it'd be $50 a person. So it's a commonplace thing now. Look, here's the way I look at it. Usually... Uh, smaller table spaces. Uh, it's a budgeting issue for mm-hmm. high-end restaurants. You know, you do a no-show, they're not going to get somebody off the street that's going to fill that table. It just doesn't happen that often. So I get it. I'm, yeah. uh, you know, they take uh, a page from, uh, you know, vacation homes or resorts or hotels. They'll do the same thing. But I just had never heard about it in restaurants before, as mm-hmm. the older folks say. Restaurants. Uh, at O'Mara's, if uh, you were a no-show, the next time you would come in, we'd have you clean the ladies' room at the end of a Friday night. Thank you. The weird thing was how many people in Manassas would purposely not show. <laughs> yeah, those were creepy people, Rob. <laughs> I know. Those were the, the guy, the sorts. one dude, you know, stiffed us three times just because he wanted to be in the ladies' room at 2.30 in the morning. What a Freak. jerk. We'll be right back. With you. Fuel, your peak performance with 4 Wellness, the ultimate functional food brand. For Wellness, founded by Phil Mickelson and renowned performance coach Dave Phillips. It is a game-changing performance coffee supplement. Just put it in your coffee. Elevate your brew with just one scoop. Tastes good, too. For enhanced focus, reduced caffeine jitters, increased collagen and fat-burning support, For Wellness makes it easy to integrate high-quality functional ingredients into your daily routine. Plus, with a risk-free 60-day money-back guarantee, what do you got to lose? Unleash your full potential with Four Wellness because your body and mind deserve the best. So if you drink coffee, it's time to give Four Wellness a try. Head to fourwellness.com slash TMOS and use code TMOS for 20 per- 25% off your order. Again, that's fourwellness.com slash TMOS for 25% off and make sure you use our promo code TMOS so they know that we sent you. It's as easy as that. I uh, don't hear a lot of bad things about The Rock, you know, as far as being a good guy, being out there. And I didn't realize this. Apparently, like John Cena, he is often one to honor make-a-wish requests. Okay. And, you know, as a kid who has had cancer, it means a lot to me when they do this, especially if they don't make a big deal about it. He recently found out that there was a kid between two and three years old in Hawaii that has a brain dysfunction and she really wanted his character from Moana to sing to her and he went out of his way and he does a great job he's such a good guy kid honestly I could go on and on I could explain every natural phenomenon the tide the grass the ground oh that was Maui just messing around I could kneel on a berry that's got sprouted a tree now you got coconuts what's the lesson what is the takeaway don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway and the tapestry here on my skin is a map of the victories I win look where I've been I make everything happen look at that me mini Maui just tick 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 tock ha 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 hey Anyway, let me say you're welcome. Wonderful Thank you, Mac. World, you know, you know thing, um, uh, he did not release that. And that's like a 10 minute video that the family put out. And 
when someone who is a star of his magnitude takes the time to do something like that, I think it means a lot. So I say, hear, hear to the Rock. I always told you, Rob. I, I know told you did. You, you did. called it. Yeah, Absolutely. one of the biggest stars you of the day. Way you back certainly when. did. Back um, when I was driving my Model T. Well, how about uh, speaking of automotives? I love when little kids present as like really older people. They have like old souls. I want you to look at this little kid. It looks like it's like a lawn and garden show. Talking about tractors, it's a lawn tractor, but talking about tractors, this eight-year-old with the salesman, he's like your grandpa. What's the width on the mower deck? I believe that's from 72 inches. So that's, that's, that's nice. Maybe about six feet. That, that is. Six feet. It uses our seven iron, which is seven gauge thick steel. Ooh, that's, that's nice stuff. <laughs> Uh, I like this mower. You like the mower? I really like the one with the cab. That's probably. Oh, the... if I'm going to mow grass, I won't be comfortable. I won't be in air conditioning. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. A big old sprayer. I love. I, I heard they was at somewhere around seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand dollars. Right. It's got the. He puts his head over there. I know. It's like it's like a grown up. Seeing spray, where it sees a certain kind of weed and knows just to spray the weed, not just everything, but just that certain kind of weed. Wow, I didn't... There's cameras all out through that boom that <laughs> spot the weeds in the road, so it'll just spray that one weed. Wow, wow. that is... That's pretty amazing, isn't it? That's, that's Pacific. Thank you, Max. <laughs> I, you know, That's kudos. Specific. You know what I love? I what? love a guy that engages with mm -hmm. a kid. Hundred percent. It, it's just fantastic. You remember the old Ken Beatrice show yes. in Washington D.C. where he'd get little Johnny asking him a question. Well, Johnny, and he'd ask him legitimately. Yeah. He, look, Ken Beatrice was one of the legendary pains in the asses uh, in broadcasting. You could hear you just horror stories about the dude, but. When he would do that with a little kid who's calling the radio and he interacted with him, it was a lot of fun. And not a lot of broadcasters do no, that. I can still remember people in my family that when I was a kid would treat me not like a kid, talk to me like a grown-up. That's level. the best. It's, it's huge. The best. It's huge. Okay, there's a comedian named Brad Wenzel. And I sent you this tape isolated. Alan who? My, no, Brad Wenzel. Not okay. Wenzel. Wenzel, okay. mm -hmm. and he's stealing our catchphrase. Now, today is National Spinach Day, and he has a chunk about it, but he steals our catchphrase. Uh -oh. I'm, uh, I'm skeptical if Popeye was really in the Navy. <laughs> just because uh, just he calls himself the Sailor Man. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> All right. Do you, do you suffer from sunshine guilt? Well, on his eye. Yeah, I do today, guys. You do? Oh, I got you beat today. I, I looked at the the forecast up there, and I looked at the forecast down here. I don't, but just remember, I got uh, you know my eye. So. All I know oh, is that sunshine guilt. Must my eye? Sunshine my guilt eye. does not affect me. I am experiencing sunshine guilt right now. It is an abnormally beautiful day outside, but I'm tired. So now I feel this pressure to go outside and go for a walk and enjoy the weather while it lasts. I can't enjoy myself indoors now because the whole time I'm thinking that I should be outside. <laughs> yeah. So basically my day is ruined. You know who's lucky? Her boyfriend. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What a thing to bitch about, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's so cool. nice. It we don't get my that down day. here. We get too many sunny days down here. It's going to be 86 today. Couldn't. Uh, not going to be 86 up here. Oscar, yes. I pull this for you. Did you watch Joey? Let me get his name right. Grazianda, Grazianda. No, I did night. not. He is the bachelor, and he proposed at the conclusion of season twenty-eight. Spoiler 28, alert to Kelsey, Ooh. and they actually he proposed over ten months ago. They had to keep it secret since then. Kelsey Alexander Anderson, I love you. I, love you. <laughs> I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you marry me? I, I can't picture That's Kelsey. great television, uh, isn't it? There's three distinct ah, looking women. You lost again. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to take a gander. <laughs> yeah, please do check it out. I'm sure it's streaming. And we were just talking cars. Are you aware, Mike? Are you cognizant of the fact that Porsche has released the fastest road car in its history? Production car? Yes. Porsche just unveiled one of the fastest road cars in the world. 
perfect for you to drive as fast as you can away from the feeling that all you are is a car guy now and Linda doesn't love you and maybe she never did. <laughs> it sounds weird, but that's their slogan. Porsche, your wife is going to leave you. Ask for it by name. That's all I have. That's it. We got to get out of here. Uh, Oscar will be uh, participating uh, in a very significant move. The he will not be joining move. us for the next few days. But uh, it'll be yes. the Rob and Mike show, and uh, we always manage to get into some sort of weird trouble. So uh, join us for that tomorrow, and uh, we'll be back with a brand new episode for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. I don't know Check about out. that. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeOMaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. It's like these guys take pride in being ignorant. Cotton nail bath tissue. That's the kind of comedy we specialize in. Clean, unfunny humor. And what time did Mr. O'Mara's review come in last night? Oh, he didn't come in here at all. We're all on computers now. You see, O'Mara wrote his reviews on his home computer and then sent it in here by modems over the telephone. Oh, my goodness, how modern. Oh, you left out a bunch of stuff.